How much money can you save growing your own baby greens? Let's do some math. Now where I live, a container of baby kale is about 450. I can get about four of those containers out of each downspout like this. It comes up to $18. Now let's say it took about $3 worth of nutrients to grow it. You're making $15 off each downspout. There's about 200 plants in this downspout. A one pound bag of kale microgreens will run you between $25 and $35. There's about 128,000 seeds in one pound. So we're going to be conservative and just call it 100,000. That gives you 28,000 to play with. If each downspout is 200 seeds, that's 500 portions. If you're saving $15 on each downspout and you can get 500 portions, you're potentially saving $7,500 off of a $35 bag of microgreen seeds. Then you can take that extra money and go buy a tomato. Here's how I grow loads of basil in a tiny container. I use a tiny piece of pool noodle to hold my basil microgreen, just like I do in my other containers. So you can go look at this video to find out how I did it. And if you need to know how to grow the microgreens, I've got a bunch of other videos about that too. So I get this container that I found at Target. It holds four gallons and I cut 25 holes in the top. Now each spot holds two to three plants. So this little container has 50 to 75 plants in it. And the container that grew all this was only two gallons. So inside you just want to put your nutrient solution, let the roots hang down in it, just let it go. Now with over 50 plants in here, you are going to have to refill it. But in the beginning, these little sprouts don't take much and this will go for about a month before you even have to think about messing with it. Just let the level drop to about half and maintain that level. And that's all you have to do. Easy as can be. Thanks for the tip. And when people ask me what I do about pest management, and I tell them I really don't do anything, they find it hard to believe. And all year I only had two hornworms. And they didn't even bother my tomatoes. And then someone told me if you plant basil, buy your tomatoes, you won't get hornworms. And I thought, hmm, maybe that's it. See my towers where I was growing the tomatoes and peppers? I put some basil right up there. And it wasn't for the hornworms. I had these towers stacked three high, so I just decided to put my basil on the top. It was to get it out of the way. And I also liked that I was able to grab a handful of basil anytime I got some tomatoes. And I got to thinking, I also have basil here. And here. And here. In fact, it it's hard to look anywhere in the garden and not see some basil growing. And the only two hornworms I got were on my pepper plant, far away from the other basil. So if you're having problems with hornworms, an easy, natural way to deal with them is to plant a lot of basil. It's a great plant to have around, smells awesome, tastes fantastic, and it's a great way to deal with the pest without spraying nasty stuff on your plants. This is how I grow my sprouts, cheap and easy. I don't like buying a bunch of high priced sprouting jars. So instead of letting my ramen trays go to the landfill, I just use those. Each one takes two. One's got holes in it, the other one doesn't. Just like the nursery trays. This way I can soak them overnight right in these trays. The next morning, I just lift them up and let them drain. Get rid of the water they were soaking in. Set them back in, cover them up. Sometimes to add a little weight, I just flip the lid over and add some water. Now you have to do is rinse these out two or three times a day 
Don't let them dry out. Uncover them after a couple of days and you're all set. A lot of people have asked me how I start the plants in the power tower. I get some plants from the store like tomatoes and peppers, just rinse off the roots. But most of them I like to start from seed. This is how I do it. Alrighty guys, just want to show you. I planted these out three days ago. It says 8-14. Today's the 18th, but I planted these at night. This is morning time. It's about three and a half days ago. And I haven't done anything to it. It's in a self-watering container. You've got the ramen trays, how we set it up, right? And just a little cover. Covered them and just left it. This is our arugula, dino kale, pop choy, and the radish. I'm going to go out. This is the morning. I'm going to let them sit in the morning sun, get them a little bit of sun. If it starts to get too warm, I'm going to bring them back inside today. So they're only going to be outside for a few hours. Some people might come in here and say, oh, that's too leggy in that. And they're reaching for the light. I want my stuff to be leggy because they've got to fit inside the pool noodle. After a few more days, I transfer them to my downspouts. Or they sit for a few weeks. And then they can go in the towers. What I do when things go wrong with my hydroponics. Now things might be going alright, but then they can go sideways. And I get a lot of people getting really upset when something happens to one of their plants. With me, sometimes it's a bunch of plants. But this is how I figure things out. I ask questions. Is this the same seed I've been using over and over that previously worked? Is this a new batch? Are other plants doing good in the same containers with the same nutrients? Are they doing good in different containers with the same nutrients? If I put another plant into the same nutrients, does that plant do good? And are there other plants in the same nutrients in the same container that are doing better? So by growing a lot, I answer a lot of questions and easily start over and try again instead of being devastated by the loss of a couple of plants. And then enjoy the ones that do good. I love hydroponics. I'm growing plants in a nutrient solution. And I've done it several ways over the years. Now, I may not give you the answer you're looking for sometimes. And that's because I just want to spark your imagination. Your curiosity at childhood wonder. I like to give you ideas. And if you like it, you might think, well, what if I did it this way? Or could it be done that way? And putting ideas out into the universe like that with a lot of different people doing it a lot of different ways. Someone may come up with something that's a lot better than what I did and share it with the world. That's cool. So if you can't find all the answers, maybe do a little creative thinking. And then we can all keep on growing. <laughs>